This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Nuclear energy in Europe has always been a pretty divisive issue. In the decades after World War II, European policymakers saw nuclear energy as the future of Europe. But in the late 20th and early 21st century, many European countries started phasing out nuclear power, often for political reasons. However, in the past couple of months, we've seen lots of these countries turn back towards nuclear, with even Germany, historically Europe's staunchest critic of nuclear power, dropping its long-held opposition to nuclear power in EU environmental legislation. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the history of nuclear power in Europe, why it's on the cards again, and what could happen next. Everyone talks about the left and right of politics, but in Europe, there's something new emerging, a new right. In the latest issue of our magazine, we explain this new phenomena and run through some of the elections the new right have been winning. Read more by clicking the link in the description. Let's start with some context on the role of nuclear energy in Europe. In the late 50s, many European authorities believe that nuclear power will play a key role in the continent's energy mix going forward. European policymakers were acutely aware of the fact that unlike the US and Russia, Europe didn't have a meaningful domestic oil supply, and nuclear power looked like a perfect way to guarantee both Europe's energy security and energy abundance. To this end, in 1957, Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Luxembourg and the Netherlands signed the Euratom Treaty, officially known as the Treaty Establishing the European Atomic Energy Community with the aim of establishing a nuclear common market between these countries, as well as cooperating on developing nuclear energy. On the same day, those countries signed the European Economic Community Treaty, which was the founding agreement for the European single market, which later became the European Union. What we're trying to highlight here is that cooperation on nuclear energy among European states was clearly seen as a first step towards creating a more united and integrated Europe. Anyway, as a result, between 1957 and the late 80s, nuclear plants were being built all over Europe, and by 1989 there were around 134 nuclear reactors in operation. However, in the late 20th century, European public opinion towards nuclear power began to sour. This was both as a consequence of the Chernobyl disaster and other nuclear accidents in the 20th century, but it was also because nuclear power became tarnished by its association with nuclear weapons, which were a source of real public anxiety during the Cold War. Furthermore, issues such as fuel disposal, constructive delays and cost overruns became increasingly problematic, transforming nuclear power into a divisive issue. Consequently, several countries adopted anti-nuclear policies and initiated a phase shutdown of their reactors, while some countries like Spain even banned the future construction of any new reactors. As a result, only 14 reactors have started up over the past 30 years, while 39 reactors shut down. So in total, Europe lost around 25 reactors. Now, while nuclear does remain one of the most important energy sources in the EU today, making up about a quarter of the EU's energy mix, with more than half of that being produced by France, the state of the EU's nuclear fleet is in pretty dire straits. The average age of the fleet is over 35 years old, and the average output of these plants has dropped to pretty low levels. However, in the past couple of months, it looks like Europe might be getting back into nuclear power, with a handful of European countries who have previously banned nuclear energy either reversing their ban or reinvesting in their nuclear capacities. In Northern Europe, this May, Belgium voted to scrap the country's nuclear exit, formalised in 2003. Meanwhile, Denmark is also considering the pros and cons of reinvesting in nuclear energy once again. Both countries also officially became members of the European Alliance for Nuclear Energy in February, a pro-nuclear group which consists of 11 other countries. Even Germany, which has historically led the European charge against nuclear energy and shut down its last reactor in 2023, this month announced that it would drop its long-standing opposition to including nuclear power as a form of renewable energy within European legislation ending a long-running dispute with France and signalling a new era of cooperation between Europe's two largest economies on nuclear energy. While in Southern Europe, Italy reversed its anti-nuclear stance, solidified by referendums in 1987 and 2011, and Spain too is now planning to reverse their decision to phase out their nuclear plants, which were supposed to be shut down by 2035. 
Now, while the main Spanish opposition party has been pushing for a reversal of nuclear policy for a while now, pressure to do so has increased following the national power outage in the Iberian Peninsula last month, with the pro-nuclear lobby arguing that having more nuclear energy coursing through the grid can enable a stable power supply to back up renewable sources like wind and solar. Which brings us to the main reason that nuclear power seems to be back on the table. Essentially, the current transnational European electricity grid is in a bit of a shambles, and Europe just needs more reliable energy production. Many countries who drop nuclear, like Denmark, shifted their attention towards renewables, hoping that this would bring about cheap electricity. But while the cost of renewables has fallen over the past couple of years, renewable generation is obviously somewhat unreliable. Solar only works when the sun is shining, and wind power only works when the wind is blowing. This means that, unless you've got a way of storing massive amounts of energy, renewables need to be supplemented with a more reliable energy source. Now, many European countries previously preferred to rely on natural gas for this, but following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Europe began to decouple itself from Russian gas, which has pushed up prices. With few other reliable energy sources, energy prices skyrocketed and remain pretty high by international standards, especially in Germany and Denmark. Pro-nuclear voices have argued that this wouldn't be the case if nuclear power played a greater role in the EU's energy mix, with the Swedish energy minister arguing earlier this year that if Germany was able to produce more electricity for the European Union via nuclear power, then prices would have been lower. Sweden is also now looking to build more reactors, and undo a law which limits its nuclear fleet to 10 plants in only three locations. And this pivot towards nuclear energy reflects a wider change in public opinion too. According to Eurobarometer, most Europeans see nuclear energy more positively today compared with even just a few years ago, especially in Denmark, France and Belgium. For instance, in Denmark, which banned nuclear reactors in 1985, support for nuclear power climbed to 75% last year, compared to just 45% a decade earlier. Nonetheless, while nuclear might sound like the perfect answer to Europe's energy woes, nuclear build-outs tend to be both expensive and time-consuming. History suggests that the best way to keep costs and delays down is by iterating. That is, by agreeing on a single reactor design and just building the same reactor over and over again, which would probably be best achieved by cooperation among member states. So maybe it really is a good thing that Europe as a whole is shifting back towards nuclear. If you're engaged with complex topics like these, it's probably fair to say that you're at least somewhat interested in improving yourself through interesting, engaging online learning. If so, you'll be interested in this week's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning app designed to help you understand topics from the ground up, on everything from maths to science to AI. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you actually play with concepts, a method that's proven to be six times more effective than just watching lecture videos. To add to this, their app is designed to help you learn wherever you are, with fun, hands-on lessons that you can do whenever you have the time. So instead of mindlessly scrolling on social media, you can get smarter in a few minutes each day. For instance, Brilliant's newly updated science course helps you make sense of our universe at entry level, from the mechanics of simple machines all the way up to black holes. The course helps you better understand the world we live in by explaining the physical principles that drive modern technology, while helping you develop your scientific intuition through visual interactive problem solving. To try Brilliant for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash TLDR, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. By doing so, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription, and they'll know that you came from us, which really helps us out.